Here's the thing. What, what we want you to do is to see the holistic value of having a website, right? The reason why you have a website is to market your business. If you're not marketing your business, why do you even have it? And unfortunately, a lot of people forget that that is a very important component. It's super awesome that you build a website. Congratulations. You have some skills. You have skills, you know? But if you aren't doing something with it, then it means nothing, okay? So what I'm going to talk about is, like, I have 30 minutes to tell you everything that makes me awesome uh, for a job, right? Okay, so, but the most important things are this. You really want Yoast SEO or whatever. You can use something else. I love Yoast SEO. You want to set up the social part, okay? Because you want your website and its blog posts to be shareable. So the whole point is that people will share your content on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, wherever with their friends. And having some basic things filled out in this plugin will help you a lot. Okay, so in order to do that, you're going to want to go to the social um, icons and fill out these profiles because uh, that, that's, that helps, you know. But more importantly, more importantly, you want to go to the Facebook tab and then you want to scroll down to where it says default settings image URL. Okay, so if you think about Google as the um, kind of main player in SEO who determines search algorithms, Facebook is the main player with how things are shared. So they have something called Open Graph. And LinkedIn and Twitter and most other social networks defer to Facebook's Open Graph data. So if you don't uh, decide to have a, an image that's a default share, then your posts are going to look super lame when they're shared. I mean, that's like saying it in the nicest way possible. I literally would not even look at anything that you do if you're sharing it without a default image. And I would say it should be something that, you know, echoes your company uh, or something like that. We have some things in our media library so we can pick um, our logo. And then it's pretty simple after that. You save your changes. That's like the two most important things. I'm sure that if Yoast himself were here, he would tell you that there's more important things than that. But as far as what we're doing, building a website for our business, a florist in our local town in South Orange County, all we need to know, know is that we want people to share things from our website. And when they do, we want them to look good. So there's a tool actually um, called Developers Facebook, uh, Developers Debugging Tool on Facebook, okay? So if you want to see how it looks, if you want to see how something looks, um, it's called a sharing debugger. It used to be called, um, you know, these people with these technologies are constantly changing stuff. And... It, it doesn't matter, like last last year it was called the object debugger. Now it's called the sharing debugger. I just always type it in. Uh, now my browser knows it's developers.facebook.com slash tools slash debug, whatever. But if you want to see what happened with a image on your website, what something's going to look like, then you do that. So I'll show you a really awesome example of something that shouldn't look this way. Okay, so I'm part of the uh, WordPress marketing team, and <laughs> they do not have, um, they don't have a very good image that's a default. Oh, geez, of course, it's, I hate the internet. What the heck? Give me the, what I want. Okay. So this is our team update. So if you want to see what a URL or what a link is going to look like when it's shared on social networks, you copy that link and then go back to that tool and paste it. And it, I've already done it. So where's, 
I'm so zoomed in, I can't even see now. Okay, there it is, sorry. Well, because, you know, I, the back row, we've got to give love to the back row, right? Yeah, babe, because you know why? Because it's, I'm zoomed in, so I want you to be able to see it. But, yeah, so debug. So when you do that, it will show you... Um, it will show you what the what it looks like. So that's a super plain uh, default image, but that's the default image for anything on WordPress.org. So if I had changed it and put something else there, I can press this thing called scrape again, and it will pull up something new. But um, a lot of times, if, if you've changed your featured image on your blog post, but it's not changing on the internet, this is how you fix that. So this is a super great tool. Just remember, Facebook sharing debugger, and you will, you will love me forever, I promise. Or just tweet at me, I'll tell you what it is. Okay, so we have that, everything's great with social. So go back to our site, okay? So we have this site, it's super awesome, it's in this theme, blah, blah, blah. Maybe yours looks slightly different, um, but I decided to make a blog post. Um, go to my blog. I decided to make my blog a masonry style because I think it looks bitchin'. So I decided to um, write something super quick, like why would you go to a local florist? So this is kind of the, the marketing challenge for a lot of small businesses in the days and the age of 1-800-Flowers.com, Amazon.com, you know, even brand lists um, is one of my new favorite brands. It's kind of an ironic brand. But, like, they have K-Cups for only $3. So, and their maple syrup's bomb. Like, everything's $3. They're from Modesto. I, I went to college in Fresno, so I think it's pretty awesome. And all of a sudden, we start having these, you know, we like these things that come to our house. And what we've done is we've disconnected ourselves from the communities that we live in. And then we wonder why we feel super lonely. Like, so that's one part of it. It's when you go to the laundromat and you start talking to the weird tweaker in the corner, um, you, you might learn something about yourself, about other people, and, uh, and maybe to choose another laundromat. So, <laughs> you know, it's true. And I was, I was somewhere yesterday and I, I, I was just like, this is a great conversation that I'm having, but it wouldn't have happened if I stayed inside my house. And the great part of the internet is that it has brought so much convenience to our lives. And the terrible thing of the internet is that it's brought so much convenience to our lives. Because we've disconnected ourselves from uh, other people. Actually, Leo, one of our co-organizers, has a blog called TooFarApart.com. Because really, the internet's supposed to bring us together. And that's kind of why I'm here, is because of the internet. It's not kind of why I'm here. I am here because of the internet, right? I met all these great people because of Twitter. I got into the WordPress community because of Twitter, because of the internet brought me closer. But if you're not, if you're not using the internet to foster and develop relationships in person with actual people, not only will you have issues as a human being, but your business won't be successful because we do business with people that we know that we like and we trust. You've probably heard that hundreds of times. But if you think about your own behavior as a purchaser, as a consumer, how do you decide? We can look at ratings all day long and make fun of them, but I buy this because my friend does that, right? So why do I have this computer? Because I told Jason Tucker I need a new computer. He sent me the link, I bought it, because I trust him. You know what I'm saying? So we have buyer, um, we like to think that as buyers, we make decisions based upon research and logic, but nobody does that. Zero people do it, they think that they do it, they don't. So always marketing your business that's local, especially if it's brick and mortar, is being part of that community, right? So if I was this florist, actually this is my, um, I came up with this to teach Twitter to people. And I thought I would love to have been a florist if I wasn't allergic to pollen, <laughs> right? So this is my virtual dream. Uh, and I'm, I'm so happy to be here talking to you about it today. Um, so why would I do a local florist? And I think one of the cool things 
that about a local business is they can do things that big box businesses can't do in the same way. So if I had pedaling pedals as my business, I would reach, I would be sending ca uh, cancer patients um, complimentary arrangements when they get the diagnosis. That's something that I think would be awesome. That's something that I would do if I was a florist and had this business. Um, I'm a, a member of 4ocean.com uh, and I'm wearing my, one of my bracelets, but I'm a recurring donor for them. And that's something that I do as you too can be a guru. There's things that you can do that make you part of either a larger community or a smaller one. Whatever it is, you should talk about what that is. Maybe you volunteer on Tuesdays at the animal shelter. Maybe it's the homeless shelter. Maybe you teach kids how to use the internet. Now, maybe you're inspired by being here at Beginner Day to bring your nephew or your uncle because it doesn't matter how old or young we are. All we have to have is the internet and a computer and we can do anything. There's nothing standing in our way, right? So communicating that and developing those relationships through your content on your blog is a really great thing to do. So I'm like, of course. So if you know somebody that's recently been diagnosed, send us a tweet. So I made that a link and then it goes to Twitter <clears throat> so that they could easily just, um, you know, that's maybe too blown up. That's, that's a thing. So you can just send us a tweet, they can tweet us or whatever like that. Okay. So, um, the, my favorite, okay. I, so in my brain, I'm like, yeah, all the social networks, but that's overwhelming. Okay. So the thing that's the best in my opinion is Twitter. And I, I am extremely biased because that's how I make my living. That's how I admit all my friends. People go to Twitter to read. There's case study after case study of things and clients I've worked on where time on site is higher on Twitter. Um, you can look at Google Analytics and see where your traffic is coming from. But the truth is that Facebook is some, it has a culture of post and go. People go on there, oh look, I'll take a selfie. Right? Let's see. I'll tell you. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do what we all do, right? Come on, internet. Love me. Selfie. Oh, look. I'm at beginner day. So I'm going to go like this. And I'm going to go on the internet. And I'm going to make a picture. I'm not going to hang out on Facebook. I'm not going to hang out there. I don't want to be there. I just want to post my picture. And who cares how many notifications are? Let's see how many there are. Probably none because... I do look at it because it's my job. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> so, I'm, so I click there, I make it, oh, of course, because I'm doing this, it's taking forever. Yeah, I have like six notifications. I don't care. I'm doing this thing. I press done, upload my picture, blah, 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 share, whatever. And then I'm sharing it and now I'm done. Now I'm back to what I'm doing. How many people do that with Facebook in this room? Yeah, okay. So... But on Twitter, on Twitter, I like to go and read. So I'm like, oh, look, the fifth Marines are doing something. I need to go get a ticket for that. Oh, look, there's something about cannabis. That's awesome. Okay, it's legal in California. So like code of conduct people, I don't want to hear about it. Here's house and garden. Oh, maybe I want that. You didn't want to look at that, right? So to me, Facebook is things that happen as you happen to be living your life. Whereas the intent of the user on Twitter is to search you out. So if you're using the hashtag Dana Point and you want to be involved with your community, that's a great way to market your business. You can follow that hashtag and then start replying to people. So a hashtag is a pound sign with a word after it. You can use spaces or punctuation. And what it is is basically just a search term. So when you're posting on social, you wanna make your posts as generic as possible, hashtagging things as generically as possible. Think of a phone book. If you are looking for a plumber in the Yellow Pages, who remembers Yellow Pages, I know you're out there, you would look under what word? Plumber. 
Plumber. Right. And if your car broke down, what where would you look up? Okay. So if you want to buy a house, you would look for a... Thank you. So stop putting stupid shit on his hashtags on Twitter. <laughs> Because I can hashtag Bridget Willard all day long. I can hashtag Guru Says all day long. And it can be funny. It can be for my own internal reasons. But if I hashtag the name of my uh, pedaling pedals, guess what? Nobody's going to click on that to find me. The reason why you use hashtags is so that people can find you. So you want generic, generic terms. Because if I use a hashtag and they don't know that I'm there, they don't know about the hashtag, therefore nobody else is going to use the hashtag. Nobody's going to click on the hashtag. Like, people aren't using their minds. They're just like, oh, I should do this. But they're not thinking about the behavior. Social media is about people. So social media is a social science. So basically it's human behavior. So what do you do? Do that. Do you click on hashtags on Facebook? How many people click on hashtags on Facebook in this room? Of how many people are here, Roy? 70 people. One person. How many people use hashtags on Facebook? Put your hands down. Only she clicks on them. <laughs> Why are you using them? Your, your audience isn't using them. You're not using them. Your audience isn't going to use them either. But on Twitter, people do, right? Does anybody have a Twitter account in this room? Oh, that's good. That's like a good 67%. I love that. Two-thirds for the win. So that's, that's a really great way to do it. And you'll find me around this weekend because, and I hope to see you in my class at 3.30 on Sunday. By the way, I'm going to talk about job costing, which is my other passion. Uh, you cannot, you cannot um, miss that. So, but... I, Come and ask me a personalized question, and I'll give you a personalized answer, because this is a generic overview, right? But we want your website to be something that people tweet out, okay? So let's go back and do kind of an example super quick. Blah, blah, blah. So here's our, here's our um, why are you using a local florist? So you could put social icons on here, and I thought about it, but you know what? We didn't do that together. And the whole point of us doing it this way is so that we're all on the same page, literally. So basically, you could go up to the um, browser bar and then copy it. Um, and then go to your Twitter and say, why should you use a local florist? We love Dana Point. See, this makes sense. Link, boom, tweet. So when you tweet that out, of course, it's not a real, um, it's not a real um, link. So it's not going to show that awesome information. So it's kind of like, what happened? Do you hate me, Internet? The Internet has, I super love live demos, just like all my other friends. But anyway, so what happens is, you know, you can use that uh, hashtag and then, um, and then react, interact. So if I type in the search bar, hashtag Dana Point, I'll come up with people, and I'll come up with um, actual things. Like, oh man, somebody's illegally parked on Victoria. Big surprise. <laughs> it's Capitol Beach. There's Salt Creek. Like, okay, so anything that's kind of an easy win is a good way for you to reply. So like Salt Creek, this is a picture of the beach. Who doesn't love the beach? And if you don't, you're not, you're not living in Dana Point. So you could just say, you could just click reply and say, that's awesome. I love Salt Creek. Hashtag Dana Point. Cause see, they did Salt Creek, but that's a stupid hashtag. I mean, that nobody's gonna click on Salt Creek. Nobody knows a Salt Creek unless they are in Dana Point. So they're just not going to use that, okay? Think. Think. It's like whatever is the simplest explanation is what you want to do, right? So this is what I want you to never do. Where's my Twitter people again? How many of you press the retweet button? Stop doing it. Retweet, it stops the conversation, okay? It, it would be like, 
me, unless it's like really amazing information. But if you could, if you can actually reply like they were standing in front of you having a conversation and say that is an awesome picture, then do it. You just pressing retweet does nothing. You're not building a relationship because you're not having a conversation. Can you have a relationship without a conversation? Try dating. Like, oh my God, I could totally give a talk on that. It's super fun to go on a road trip with somebody all the way to Morongo and not talk or listen to music. <laughs> yeah. So I wish I was exaggerating, yo. <laughs> I really do. But that's what I'm saying. We, we laugh, but the, we, we do this all day long on social media. We just press buttons. And we think if we press a button, that's making a relationship. It's not. You know, I shouldn't have to, like, dig out so much information from you to make this work because I'm trapped in a car. Okay? So the thing is, do what you would do if that potential customer was standing in front of you. Do that on social media. It doesn't matter if you're using Instagram, Facebook, Google+, Snapchat, Twitter, WhatsApp, Viber, whatever comes out next. Even Bumble has a business section. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Email, whatever it is, whenever you have an opportunity to talk to somebody who is currently your customer or is in your demographic to be a customer, those are the people you want to have actual conversations with. And it doesn't have to be a sell. In fact, it should never be a sell because you would never do that in person because people would never, ever invite you back. Right? How many people have had gone to a Thanksgiving and you have cousin Marv who won't stop talking about his train set? <laughs> okay, or whatever. I didn't, I like made something so obscure. I hope nobody's named Marv with a train set in here. But you can't only talk about yourself or only talk about politics or only talk about your business. It's boring. Nobody cares. Nobody wants to talk to that guy. Nobody wants to be that guy, right? It's great that you do X, Y, and Z. We're super excited for you. We want to know who you are as a human being. That's what you say on Twitter. That's what you say on Pinterest. That's what you say on Facebook. Be who you are as if we were standing next to each other in line for the elevator or be better than that because like for some reason we're in line in elevators, we don't talk to people at all. We do it in grocery stores, but we don't do it in elevators. It's really interesting, right? Because you know you could die with those people. And I think we should talk to them more. I'm just saying, I might be claustrophobic, but you know, it's true. It'd be like, hey, what's your name? Just in case we die together today um, and get trapped. So one of the things you want to do is when you use those hashtags and then you have actual conversations, you might find out something about Jeff. And then I'll, I'll click on his um, profile, see what, he's, what's, what is he about. He's from Fullerton. You know, he went to CSU Fullerton. That's great. He lives in Southern California. He's a potential customer. If I have my shop on PCH and he drives by, he might think, oh, yeah, Bridget, she has that flower shop, right? We do that all the time in normal life outside of the computer, right? If we, if we start treating social media like an actual conversation and and stop allowing the computer to dehumanize us. I think that you're gonna be more successful when you do that. And thank you for your attention, and I hope that you'll ask me some legitimate questions, or you can tweet me at, you too can be guru. Thanks.